The Earth is a water planet, but global water resources are under attack. From dead zones to acidic oceans, vanishing groundwater to rerouted rivers, our water planet is changing in ways that threaten us all. The good news is, solutions exist, and Earth Echo is on an adventure to find them. I'm Philippe Cousteau. Join me as we explore how the most precious resource on Earth is driving some of the most exciting innovations in engineering on Earth Echo Expeditions, Water by Design. After many years of severe drought, Southern California has invested heavily in large-scale solutions to conserving the water that they import from the Sierra Nevada Mountains and Colorado River. But importing water from outside the region is not the only solution. From the Los Angeles Aqueduct, we made our way south to Orange County, where their focus is to manage local water coming from deep underground. Sandy Scott Roberts is the program manager of the Groundwater Replenishment System at the Orange County Water District. She walked us through Orange County Water District's innovative solution, some major engineering that is inspired by Mother Nature. So Senator, where are we and what goes on here? So this is the Orange County Water District. Okay. We are a groundwater replenishment agency and we use a wasted resource, well what used to be a wasted resource, uh -huh. and we treat it further for drinking water for Orange County. And we do that through the Groundwater Replenishment System, okay. or GWRS. Okay. And that's what this facility is. So where do you get the water in the first place? We first get the water from our neighbors, the Orange County Sanitation District, who collect all the sewer from Orange County. Mm -hmm. So, so toilet water. Sewage water into drinking water. That's right. That's right. Okay. Sewage water into drinking water. Sandy walked me through the three-stage process that takes water from Orange County drains and produces water that passes drinking water standards. So why does this matter? Why do, why do we go through all this trouble? So at the Orange County Water District, we uh, provide groundwater to the cities in Orange County. Now groundwater is water that's underneath us. It's in a underground reservoir that is filled with native sand. And water actually travels through that sand at a very slow pace, mm -hmm. about a foot a day. But there's certain regions that have groundwater basins, and we happen to be living in Here one. in Orange County. Here in Orange County. So this groundwater basin provides drinking water for the cities in Orange County. The cities pump out the groundwater and serve it to their homes. Mm -hmm. um, with years of groundwater use, the groundwater levels get lower and then cities run into issues pumping that water out to their cities. So our job is to replenish that groundwater basin by putting additional water into the groundwater basin so that the cities can continue pumping and providing water to it. So essentially this is drinking water. Yes. You're just putting it into the ground yes. first for people to be able to pull, then pull it out. Exactly. That's right. Um, and why does that matter? So you're, are you asking why we can't go yeah. directly why to a home? Well, why can't we just go, uh, why, why don't we keep pumping all the water from Colorado River and all these other places? I mean, that's, well, you yes. know, a lot of people are aware that, yes. we, that we ship water from a long way away. Right, right, to exactly. To the LA region. Exactly. So. Because of the groundwater basin, we are able to provide 75% of the water demands from the groundwater basin alone. That's because of the efforts we do to replenish the groundwater basin. See, now there, if you didn't do those efforts. If we didn't do those efforts, the cities would be much more reliant on imported water. Now this treatment process that we do, the three steps, the microfiltration, reverse osmosis, ultraviolet light, it is a high energy intensive process, but it, it is not match the energy used for those imported water sources. So this is the first step, it's called microfiltration. And it involves small hollow fiber membranes okay. with uh, 0.2 micron diameter holes on the outside. Now 0.2 microns. You say, how small is that? 1 300th the diameter of a human hair. That is the size That's of the small. holes on the straws on the microfilters. Okay. And so any particle that's bigger than that gets filtered out. 
it doesn't go on to the next step. And what kinds of particles is so that? So we're talking bacteria, algae, suspended solids, particles, um, anything that you can visually see in the water and not see at 0.2 microns, like yeah. bacteria, is filtered out. As we moved to the second stage of this purification process, Sandy explained that over the years, as water was removed from the basin, the water level in the basin went down. At times, that allowed seawater from the Pacific Ocean to begin to enter the groundwater basin, which could make the basin water brackish and unusable to humans. In 1976, a system of wells were installed along the coast which began pumping fresh water from Orange County Water District into the ground to create a barrier to prevent seawater from entering the groundwater basin. So in order to keep the groundwater basin uncontaminated, treated wastewater has been pumped into the ground for nearly 50 years. So reverse osmosis. So this is taking the water from the first, the microfiltration, yep. through pipes, Yep down here, exactly. I assume, yep. up and then pushing it through these tubes. Exactly. And within these tubes are the reverse osmosis membranes. Okay. Um, this process filters on a molecular weight scale. So it's things we can't see in the water. For example, if you ever uh, dissolve salt within yeah. water and you taste it. You can't see it. Your water looks clear, but you can, but taste, you it. can taste it because so it's a dissolved solid. And that's on a molecular level. That's a molecular level, and that's what's being filtered out. Now, and there are small molecules that have about the same molecular weight as H2O okay. that do make it through. Uh -huh. And that's why we have our last step with this ultraviolet, ultraviolet okay. light. And it's also called UV photolysis. So that's the third step yes. in this three-step process. Yes. So we can take a look at that too? Let's do it. I'll follow you. All right. So this is the third phase then, Yes. Sandy. This is ultraviolet light. Or all of this in here. All of this behind us, or UV photolysis. Any small molecules that may have made it through the reverse osmosis membrane, they are rendered harmless and destroyed through this process. And many of you are familiar with uh, ultraviolet light. Uh, sunlight, when it actually burns your skin, it, it harms your skin. That's the yep. disinfection property. Okay. And that's what we're using the UV light for this last process. Okay, so just to absolutely make 100% sure that that water is yep. totally safe to drink. Exactly. And yeah. so what have we got here? So what we've got here is kind of a showcase that shows the water throughout the different steps that we've walked through today. Okay. So this is water that's gone through the microfiltration. Exactly. The first stage. Yep, so this is also reclaimed water, the non-potable water that waters golf courses and school parks. This is that water. And so then what happens after this? We actually take this water and send it through that second treatment process. Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis. Got it. So once this water goes through the reverse osmosis, it has to either get through the membrane and meet that molecular weight cutoff or not. Uh -huh. And so the water that does not meet that molecular weight cutoff is this. This is the concentrated brine that is left over from the reverse osmosis I process. See. So this is kind of the wastewater exactly. after reverse osmosis. Right. And then this the water that is still good and passes the, that the, passes the, through. the reverse osmosis. Right gets zapped with the UV, exactly. and boom, voila. Exactly, that's so right. this is drinkable. This is drinkable, and we can do that right now. If you'd really? like to take it. Okay, yes. I'm trusting her on this one. <laughs> so this, just how long ago was poop water? Uh, probably four hours ago. <laughs> really, I was expecting you to say like a couple days, which would make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so four hours ago, yep. there was Yes. Sewage floating around <laughs> in this water. Mm. Yes. Delightful. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to your health. Yes. <laughs> Delicious. Yes. And Delicious. what does it taste like? It tastes like pure, perfect water. water. There you go. Yep. A little bit more. Tastes like water. We always say that's our kind of our saying. It tastes like water because tastes like water. it is. Because it is water. water. The more that I considered the solutions at Orange County Water District, the more I realized how those engineers had mimicked the natural water cycle, allowing wastewater to percolate and recharge the groundwater basin the way snowmelt and rainfall would do in a landscape that had less impervious surfaces. But here on the California coast, 
some solutions are a little more inventive, and I was heading to learn more. To learn more about freshwater resources and find ways to take action in your own community, visit Earth Echo International at www.eartheco.org.